Cheers. Cheers to them. Are you ready? Yep. Hello, I'm Dan. I'm Lisa. And welcome to our podcast, Siblings in Zion. Yes. Which is a title that we were pretty sure we were going to go with. And now that we've said it. Yep. That's, it's official. Here, here we go. There's no looking back now. No. Here we are. Here we, we're, we're doing it. We're committed. Okay. So Lisa and I are brother and sister. And we were raised in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Mormon Church, the LDS Church, what have you, etc. Uh, the cult, <laughs> Zientology, <laughs> Zientology, and um, we're doing an introduction today, and we don't really have a plan. We're just going to work it out. It's we're recording on a sunny, warm day in August. Mm-hmm. And these will probably start coming out, I would imagine, in a couple months. Really? Yeah, because I want to get a few banked and then make sure that... So Lisa is going to be moving back to China for another year or so as she teaches little Chinese kids the English. The ones of China. And so we're going to have to do this remotely once she's there. So I want to make sure that we've got that figured out before we... <sighs> got to get real tech savvy real there. soon. Yeah. <sighs> okay. So it all starts podcast wise. I've been doing a show with my friends called the Fundamentals Podcast for uh, we just passed five years since we started recording that. Such a good show. Yeah, you're right. I'm biased. It's pretty good. But I'm... <laughs> and the premise of that show is to choose topics that we have little to no knowledge of, but a great interest in mm -hmm. knowing more about. And at the beginning, it would be the two of them, Martin and Darren, would each do their research independently of each other. And I, when we got together, would act as the listener by proxy to facilitate the conversation, ask questions, and be the active listener mm -hmm. with them. And so we did episodes on Scientology. We did episodes on... The kidney kidney like um, a variety of things biographies like a man named carl tanzler mm. oh, a weird carl tanzler. weird man <laughs> biography is uh, like bobby fisher the chess mm -hmm. player orson wells right. and then more uh, biology and science stuff like the kidneys blood mm -hmm. we did things like plastic that was interesting uh, transcendental meditation mm -hmm. that's a really popular one so a variety of things what do we want to know more about and so we've done that for quite a while. And while we were doing that, I, whenever being Mormon came up, if, it, if I ever left it in, it was a passing reference. Mm -hmm. And I would always take out <laughs> any indication that I was drinking <laughs> while we recorded this, the show, which I definitely did. <laughs> uh, Sweeping it under the rug. <laughs> and, and I got to thinking, if we ever were to do an episode about Mormonism, mm -hmm. I would I would have to do a great deal of research myself because I don't really know how to explain. I don't think most Mormons do. Right? I don't know how to no. explain the doctrine, and I don't really know how to convey my experience as a as a lesson in what Mormonism is. Right? Because there's a lot of things I didn't know because I never yeah. went to the temple. Yep. So I thought, if that's ever going to happen, and if I'm really not going to believe mm -hmm. all this that my that my family has wanted me to believe my right. whole life, then I should do my due diligence and I should put in the work in order to learn exactly what it is that I'm not believing. So why? I'd make an active choice. Mm -hmm. So I started to do that. No more fence sitting. Right. And oh boy, even, did you hop off man, that fence? Oh boy, I leaped. <laughs> Just I sword. dove right in. <laughs> and I ran all around. And I was like, what the hell? What is this place? Where am I? This is not what I was expecting at all. <laughs> Some of this stuff is beyond what I could have imagined this religion right. to be. You watched a video about oh, I watched like, many. Mormon. Like what more missions don't tell? The what more missionaries don't tell you? The first thing that really got me was this funny little animated short yeah. about what missionaries don't tell you. 
Yeah, just like super farcical, like tongue in cheek. Yeah, but and it, a lot of it sounded made up to me. Yeah, like I, I've never heard be this before. Yeah, signs and tokens, passwords to get you into heaven. Other planets. God lives on a planet. God called, lives near a star, star Colob. What? I, I that word was not floating around in, in my your brain. Repertoire. No, and I was like, wow, if any of that is true. I gotta, I gotta learn some more. So that was about two years ago. Mm-hmm. A and, uh, lot has changed a lot since has then. Changed. I've done a lot of research. I, I've really dived in, and uh, turns out I made the right choice. I just didn't know. Uh, yep. I just didn't know why I did. Intuition, or what really the choice I was making. Yeah, it was intuitive. I. I, Intuitively, I, you rejected the church a long time ago. Oh, sure. I stopped going to church as soon as I could. Yeah. As soon as I didn't have to. Mm-hmm. And I just left it alone. Peace out. You ha- you guys have fun. I'm just not going to participate. And I'm, I was just totally apathetic about yeah. it. Even when you went on a mission, spoiler alert, <gasps> I said, I don't get it, but I support you. Cool for you. Yeah. Go get them. Go get them. Be here when you get back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. So when I did start this this research, I of course I started to think about my family participating in the things that I didn't know, especially in the temple. Thinking All that weird shit. Their oh, thumb right, across their that neck. That used to be what they had to do, yeah. Pantomiming their own death. Right, and and their and their and their guts their gut, spilled yeah, out and their right. tongue ripped from its Ooh, roots. Yikes. If they were to ever speak about the sacred things that they had just experienced. Real. And then learning that all of that comes from the Masonic rites. Yeah, that was trippy. Yeah. Yeah. But you never did that because they took it out before you ever went there. Edited that part of the story. Because it was extremely uncomfortable. A little over the top. Yeah. Yeah. A bit much. A bit. Just take it easy, guys. Not culty at all. No. Uh, So then I I started to think about you. and You had always been the most open-minded and we have always been the closest mm-hmm. members of our family. Mm-hmm. We've always had a very close relationship. Lisa's quite a bit younger than me. I, I don't. We don't have to say our exact ages, but no. we're about ten years apart. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I started to ask you what you thought of these strange mm-hmm. things that I'd been learning. We had, we were walking home from talking to our grandma, oh, that's and I right. think one of the first questions. That you asked me was just about Kolob. I think that's literally mm-hmm. the first thing you're like, did you know that God lives on Kolob? Like, yeah. do you Do you know what Kolob is? What is that? <laughs> like, what do you think about that? And I just like laughed. And I was like, oh yeah. Like, you don't know about that? Like, there's <laughs> a song about you're it. You're telling me you don't know about you that? Know and about I didn't that? remember the song. Yeah. If Once you I, could hide. If you Kolob. could hide to Kolob. <laughs> is, that, is that the melody? Yeah. In a twinkling of an eye. Yeah, it's just that over and over yeah. and over and over again. Once I listened to it, it sounded vaguely familiar, right. but collab as as a term, as a thing. And it's only mentioned, what, once in the Book of Abraham? It's certainly not talked about in yeah. primary. and <laughs> No. And uh, nope. Sunday school. Because it's a bit weird. It is a bit Weird. Because that place is God in time and space. Yeah. Which is not. Um, which is uh, pretty different yeah. than the God of the Bible. So that was the first interaction where I said, this is uh, unbelievable to me. Yeah. And I made it plainly clear that no matter what that is to me, if if it's something else to you, that's fine. Yeah. I just want to talk about what, how you reconcile these things. These things You're just that don't seeking s- my opinion exactly. as someone who was currently then living it. Yeah. And if and if you don't know this stuff, you should. Yeah. And if you still believe it, fine. But I want to make sure that you know exactly what you're into. Right. And that sparked different conversations where, for the most part, you were still defensive of... Yeah. I mean, and not actively defensive right, towards me, but... taking the defensive had, stance... Yes, you had your apologetic stance. Right. You had answers about things from the gospel perspective. Yeah. Uh, in regards to to my understanding of certain things. Right. And that was super fun. 
It was. And at the time, I was like, oh, he's coming back. Did you, did you really no, think I, that? No, I kind of did, like, at the very beginning, because I was still super what? Mormon. No, seriously. I was like, what oh, about he's, my vibe gave I, off I that impression? <laughs> it wasn't, I don't know how to describe it. It wasn't like I really believed. I never saw you coming back. Sure. I never, it never made okay, sense good. to me to see you in that role. Yeah. I was like, it just, it doesn't, it hadn't been for it doesn't fit. Fifth, almost 15 years, really. Yeah. No, it, I never, I never imagined that really happening, but like, because our parents and our grandmother, they know how close we are. They figured if anyone could do it, it would be me. That's, yeah, you know what that's I mean? true. So I just felt like. But also the reverse is true. Yeah. If anyone, <laughs> if anyone can get you to listen <laughs> intently and honestly to the legitimate arguments, Plot twist. it would be me. <laughs> Guess who? <laughs> Guess who won that arm wrestling match? Yeah, man. So eventually, it all leads to on September third, two thousand eighteen, receiving my official confirmation of my resignation from the church. Hallelujah. Because up until I'd really started learning about this, and even for a while after, I was like, okay, I'm still technically a member of the church and I don't want to be, mm -hmm. but if I were to do this before our dear sweet grandmother passes away and she right. finds out that would be heartbreaking. What? Yeah. And why would what I do blow. that if I don't have to? Yeah. But then it occurred to me, it's not, impossible of course that i could pass away before she does somehow and then i would die a member of the church oh i didn't realize that that was your thought process there it was yeah. and i can't do that right. i don't want don't to want do that. that no to have a mormon funeral or no can they give you a mormon funeral if you're not a member that's a great question i don't even know they'd probably try they probably you have find to you have to be my advocate no <laughs> no <laughs> Release him! <laughs> <laughs> so I, I had to do it. Yep. I had to, I had to officially remove myself. Quitmormon.org. So it turns out, I, in order to be discreet about it and not have somebody contact my local ward or the ward that I'm, you know, last affiliated with, or have somebody come to my door if that was possible. Right. I found that you could go to quitmormon.org and a pro bono lawyer would offer the service of resigning on your behalf. And in that case, it typically it happened a lot faster mm -hmm. and without all of those personal repercussions. Yeah. It took a couple months. And actually, I was expecting some sort of email to come back. Right. But I think I sent in the resignation in mid-August. Yeah. It only took about three weeks. I just didn't oh, learn about it didn't until about three or four weeks after it had actually come back. Right. Because I went to check on it and it was there and I, and I didn't know. Surprise. There you go. And I was out. And then eventually on what, what was it? In July? Yeah. Of this year? Mm -hmm. You did the same. July 11th. And boom. Pew, pew. You're listening to two legitimate apostates. Legitimate freshly <laughs> freshly converted to so the other side this leads to I finally do open up and take that research and apply it to an episode of the Fundamentals podcast and I thought we would do one episode and we'd be able to get you All know a good a, a, you know at least a good chunk of it in an hour and a half or so and right. like pfft. didn't you do three we did two initially and then we had Lisa come on yeah. and we did part three and four. Right. Where uh, I explained my growing up in the church, right. going to a church university, yep. serving an LDS mission, and then my faith transition. Yeah, quite a bit on the on the missionary yeah. life. Heavily, yeah, on that because it's just so it's just so good to talk about. Yeah. It's just so fun. <laughs> and I'm sure we will a lot. There's yeah. a lot that I still don't really know about. Your yeah. experience in that. Yeah, there's a lot that I've blocked out. Sure. <laughs> and then we talked about how she made it out. So, and I'm sure we'll, we'll we'll rehash some of that stuff and probably expand on it on on this show. But essentially, doing that led to me having the the thought. Well, we've done four episodes for our show. 
that's enough. I mean, it's called the fundamentals for a reason. The point right. is for us to do that deep dive and come together to talk about it and have fun doing it mm -hmm. and impart at least the fundamental understanding of that topic to the listener over the course of the episode. Right. So we've never, we've never done more than two parts of, any of a topic. topic. Yeah. So I thought, well, Lisa and I have such rich, deep conversations about <laughs> this stuff, but then about all the stuff that's much more fun to think about yeah. outside of it. Yeah. Like if, if this isn't what Christianity or Mormonism or anything puts forth, then what is it? If this isn't the truth, then what is? Yeah. What, what is the truth as far as we can find? Yeah. And so we talk about that all the time. It, so like we can't not talk about it. Right. <laughs> I, can't, nah. I can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it occurred to me, um, I make podcasts I... and I could make another one and it would be super fun to do it with, with you. So we could keep talking about this stuff and we can make something of it. Yeah. And somebody might find it useful. I, I hope, hope so. so. At the very least Certainly entertaining. I hope so. Because there's, you know, other people out there that have produced Oh yeah. Post Mormon infotainment. That's right. As Zuff on the Shelf calls it. <laughs> and that's been so helpful. Yeah. To two people who have transitioned out of very much so. that faith. So Yeah. Are there there's a lot of great sources for a this lot kind of, other of stuff. Things. Yeah. But we want to have our own discussions. Right. And, and our, we have our own perspectives. There's not really a, a brother sister partnership out not there. Not that I'm aware of. Yeah. Just recently there was a brand new podcast. Um, now I forget what the three, it's called. The Three Brothers? Is yeah. That... Do you remember Mormon the name raised. of it? Mormon Raised. Mormon Raised. Yeah. Which is a great title. It is great. They did. I, I haven't listened to it, yeah. but I, I sh I'd like to, actually. Uh -huh. And that that is a sibling podcast about yeah. it. And I, I saw that on Reddit just the other day. Yeah. I was like, oh, fuck. Ah, they beat us <laughs> to it, those bastards. <laughs> but at least it's still different. It's a little different, yeah. So, so here we are. So here we are. We're doing it. We're doing it. This is great. Can so I mean, how do we even begin with some sort of? I mean, we wanted to talk about baptisms for the dead. Oh, I have a list of things we that we're, so we're going to go. We have so many things to talk about. But I, I feel like in this introduction, we should just talk, kind of introduce right. ourselves, right? Yeah. And how we got here? How do we get here? So. Well, yeah, like I said, you you can listen to uh, part three and four. I mean, listen to any episode you want, really, right. of the Fundamentals podcast. But <laughs> Lisa was featured on Mormonism part three and four. Yeah, right. I don't know. How much of that should I recap here? You can do as much as you want. As much as you want. <laughs> <laughs> as long as we got Rosé. Yeah. Um, How about this? What's the f earliest memory you have of... Like testimony, feeling like feeling. you had you had your own testimony, right? Of the gospel. That's a good question. I was actually just reading about our grandmother's first experience with that. Mm. She was eleven. Oh wow! She had she had I'm t I'm typing up her life story, and she had earlier experiences that she now looking back was like, oh, I was feeling the spirit as an even younger child, but. When she was 11, she she said that she bore her testimony mm. in church. And she just like, <laughs> you know, that just kind of like reaffirmed her emotional yeah. feelings about burning in the about bosom. That experience. Yeah, exactly. And she said that she just like was really overwhelmed and was crying and her friends were like really supportive and helping her like just get through that. and Yeah. Uh, she just felt like she was really surrounded by people that loved her. I'm sure she sense. was. Yeah. So that was interesting. Uh, as far as my own first experience, I mean, I remember singing primary songs. Yeah. As a tiny kid. Mm hmm. And. Jesus wants, wants me, me for a sign. Beep. And there was always some kid going, Bang! <laughs> Seriously. You just uh, you stand up when you say beam. Everybody's like, Bang! Oh, man. 
yeah, I mean, I don't remember not believing it, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that's true. I mean, it was from and, the and get-go. before you were in college, before you and I started broaching the subject, yeah. did you ever doubt? Yeah. Not to the degree, like not doctrinally. Does that make sense? Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't the facts of it. It was just like the hard facts yeah, of Mormonism. The hard facts of Mormonism. The ugly truth. Because obviously no one was talking to me about that. Sure. I didn't have that information. No, what you thought were facts. Right. Yeah, exactly. It was more just like teenage adolescence. Like, I want to do this, but I can't because of these rules. That was mostly... Feeling bad about it. Yeah. Yeah. Feeling guilty. What's more important to me? Doing this, being a normal (laughs) teenager? Yeah. Yeah. Or acting appropriately. Right. And like... And representing my faith. Yeah, and not losing the trust of my parents. Because there are eyes on me. Exactly. Yeah, because someone's going to ask me about it later. Yep. I mean, we had intense supervision. And you were in a school in which there was at least a handful of right. other Mormons. Exactly. My best friends were Mormon. I remember when I went to a party. It was probably junior or senior year and our cousin was there and we were both like oh hey oh hey both like you won't tell if i don't right (laughs) i I don't know if she was probably she probably wasn't drinking right or you know partying but she was there right and it was was, the appearance of evil and it was yes exactly Uh, because you'll never know right so you can believe whatever you want yeah (laughs) yeah Oh, and Mormons love to tell stories and gossip. Speculate. We're such it's uh, probably it's probably the worst. We're so judgmental. It's it's not in line I say with we. Yeah. <laughs> there. It's not in line with, with I uh, was. what they should be doing. So it's probably actually the worst thing they could be doing at all. But yeah, yeah, I'm just gonna assume the worst. Yeah. Yep, they're a spawn of Satan. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I remember hearing those stories. I remember yep. somebody started a rumor about, I heard a rumor about me oh my God. when I was like in middle school <laughs> about having sex with my girlfriend. I was like, that's not true at all. Hey guys. Not even close. I've never even kissed her. <laughs> How does this happen? That's rude. Yeah. Yeah. Probably because she wasn't white. Oh, fuck. Speculation. I remember <laughs> in high Mormons. school. I had a girlfriend who was Latina, and our aunt worked in the lunch oh. cafeteria oh, with yeah. her mom. Oh, and my girlfriend at the time told me that she, my uh, my aunt told her mother that it was cute that we were together and whatever, but she hopes that I find a nice white girl oh to marry. Oh my god! She said that to her. Apparently, she did. What? I don't know why. Why would she say that? I don't think her mother would have lied about that. Oh, my God. It's like, wow, that is a really shitty thing to say. Yeah, that is. Like, how just, how low? Like, yeah. And, but superficial. But they don't think they're being rude. Yeah. I, I really doubt that most people, even though this religion is so racist and mm-hmm. sexist and mm-hmm. bigoted, all throughout that they really don't see that and they and they don't act intently with that right. to other people yeah it just happens to be in there and they don't realize it because that's happened a lot it's unfortunate very unfortunate like our know. parents are like subtly racist yep for sure and i don't i really don't think that there's malevolence in that no it's, it's just, just ignorance just totally yeah it's you ignorance don't realize how unchrist like yes you are when you talk about these kinds of things right it's their upbringing it's their generation well because in, in the mormon church you have a superiority complex for sure we belong to the one the single most. true church on the earth therefore yes we are saints and we have the responsibility to tell everyone else about that's it. right we are the saints of the latter days so it's 
no surprise yeah, that they walk true. through the world thinking that, that they are somehow entitled. Yeah. Above. Superior. And again, I don't think that they act yeah. like I am better than you. Right. But they are imbued with the spiritual Those sense that they are yeah. at, at the very least chosen. Yes. Elect. That's right. Which is stupid because how, is. How, how are you elect when you're just born into it? Exactly. Which aren't most people. Uh, yep. Most lifelong Mormons are born into it. Yeah. The retention rate of con- conversions is not high. No. I'm always baffled It's really when adult low. people convert to the Mormon church. Yeah. There's got to be a lot of other issues. There's a lot there. Going There's got to be. Just like that feeling you just need to belong. The missionaries were nice or they yeah. were cute. Or yeah. your best friend is Mormon or The sense of community whatever. is strong. It is really strong. And they yeah. are very welcoming. And just like Jehovah's Witnesses, they love bomb. Yeah. When there's a new, there's a strange person oh, in the congregation. Like, who are you? <laughs> hey. I'm Sister Sun, so. Look at this opportunity yeah. for me to fellowship. Are, are you coming to gospel doctrine class? Mm-hmm. Oh, you can sit with me. We'll share a. We'll share a Book of Mormon. Fellowship the shit out of those people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mormons think they're really nice people. And everyone else thinks they're really nice people. Yeah. But only to an extent. Because once you get baptized, they're like, ah, fuck you. Like, <laughs> like you remember now. I don't need to pretend yeah. that I'm your oh, best I'm friend. Oh, I'm going to talk shit about you now. Oh, y- oh, you're not as good of a member as we thought you'd be. Hmm. Well, I don't know why nope, you're wearing they that. They really do. I don't know why you have long hair. <laughs> And a man shave that beard. Excuse me. You heathen. Um, the length of that dress <laughs> is, is questionable. Much too short. And I have sons. <laughs> they need you. We're gonna need you in a couple to up. solve their yes. problem. It is your responsibility. Because they're so sexually repressed that anything above the knee is just—it's too far. It's uh. <laughs> No. It's, uh, it's a turn on. <laughs> you skank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. It's like you get baptized and then you're held to this insane bar yeah. of perfection. And if you fall short, people know. And you're held to that. For the rest of your life. Even if you're baptized at eight years old. Yep. Like we both were. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the segue into... When Lisa was eight years old. <laughs> Guess who baptized And I me? was roughly a decade older. For some reason, she insisted that I baptize her. Very adamant. Which put me in an awkward position because by that time, I had already bed, bed a young woman <laughs> and had some drinks of alcohols, <laughs> puffed a couple of marijuana cigarettes. <laughs> And uh, was not super into being Mormon. Yeah. Turns little out. to my knowledge. I mean, of course not. I was eight. I hit it very well. I've, I've led and I. A double it's life. It's very interesting. But for most of my life around my family and members of the church, mm-hmm. I have been a different version of myself. Yep. A diminished. Mm-hmm. Reserved. Reserved. Quiet. Need to know that's basis. Where, that's why people think I'm such a quiet and shy person. Yeah. It's because for a lot of the time, I had to be. You had to be. What were you supposed to say? Yeah. The truth? I, I wasn't involved in their side, so I couldn't participate in that. So I just was quiet. Mm-hmm. I couldn't speak honestly about myself. So yeah, most people had no idea. <sighs> yeah. Most people still don't. Nope. Really? I mean, once you stop going to church, it's kind of like you disappear. Yeah. Because they don't see you any other time. Nope. So, and and that just really speaks volumes to the the quote-unquote depth of those relationships. Right. Very superficial. Because that's the only reason you interact. Yeah. And then after, you know, 25 years, 23 years of me attending... That same congregation. Right. I've known those people my whole Mm -hmm. life. And they really don't know me at all. Not really. No. No. 
They know they, they what know they saw some, for like, three hours on They Sunday. know some stats about you. Yeah, they know what your hobbies are. are. Yeah. Yeah, where you will go to school, what you're interested in. Right. And that so you that are they can Mormon. check in. Oh, yeah. Briefly in the hallway. Mm-hmm. And that's all. So when she's eight years old, I'm an early adult, really. You got it together. For a short amount of time, I did... Play the game. Right. I repented. You jumped through the hoops. I acted accordingly. Was there any part of you that actually believed that you were like doing the right thing, so to speak? Yeah. The right, you know, whatever that means. Yeah, the right thing for you. Oh, okay. If that's what you wanted. That's so nice. Of course, my little sister, who I love, (laughs) is like, I want you to do this. Oh. Not, Not traditionally my father. Right. Which... Who baptized me and our other sister. Yeah. That's usually what, what happens. Yeah. So it's it was a call. meaningful thing. And so, you know, just in case, I mean, yeah. I didn't want to, I didn't want to somehow be responsible for you not being. Right. Having a valid baptism. Right. Or whatever. So I, I played the role. Yeah. Was there ever a moment for you growing up? Like the same question you asked me, was there ever a moment mm-hmm. that where you were like, oh, I have a testimony. When I was really young, before I was a teenager, yeah, I thought there couldn't be any other way. Right. So whether it was easy for me to participate in, mm-hmm. whether or not I liked it, I felt like this, Just like I mean, it. if anything is true, it has to be this. Right. So I need to get on board. Mm-hmm. Did I have a really deep... <sighs> I hope they call me on a mission. Uh, never, never <laughs> did I honestly sing that song. Me neither. Even when I was, I remember being eight, nine, ten in primary and thinking, okay, I have eight years. <laughs> the clock is ticking. The clock is ticking. I have eight oh, years shit. until I have to either go on a mission or tell them that I'm not going to. Right. You got a fork in the road coming up. But it's it's years down the right. road. Oh. I can just hang out and be a kid now. Right. I dreaded turning 19. Absolutely mm. dreaded it. That's awful. Because I knew I didn't want to go. Right. And I probably wouldn't. Nope. And I didn't. And falling below those expectations. Yeah. I've been falling short of Mormon expectations my entire life, for right. sure. I hit some milestones. I gave the shortest possible talks in sacrament meeting when I was asked to. Mm-hmm. I bore my testimony when I was nudged up there. Your favorite hymn was the shortest one in the hymn Exactly. Book. For health and strength <laughs> and daily food, we praise thy name, O Lord. Shortest hymn ever. My favorite. Amen. Uh, so I did it. I baptized you. And then I... Thank you. I <laughs> flew to see my girlfriend at the time. Yep. I think it must have been... Right after that. Yep. You were wearing a backpack in, in the my photo that we photo. took. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, I mean, I did, your I did, duty was done. I did what I had so, to do and then I got back to it. The tie came off. Yep. It was yeah. a Scooby hate, Doo tie, if I remember correctly. <laughs> probably was, yeah. I hated dressing up oh. Sunday school clothes. Yeah. Not comfortable. You know, I don't regret, I, I don't regret growing up in the church no. because that. I don't, I have a choice. That was my life. Yeah. And there were plenty of fine experiences, plenty of friendships I had that were real. Yeah. Plenty of people in the congregation. I actually did admire and respect and and have a relationship with and kind of, you have an extended family of people Mm -hmm. looking after you and caring for you. For sure. Uh, Again, feeling important. Yeah. But little did I know that I was being for the most part, unknowingly lied to my entire life about, Pretty much. about the nature of the world and yep. my, my own existence. Yep. That I was born in the latter days because I was one of the most valiant. Yep. And in the pre existence. Yep. And I just happened to be born right into the one true church. I didn't have to do Look at you. all that work. Man. I could just roll right into it. Live my life, get my physical body. Hit the ground running. Head back on to heaven and live with that dun, 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 dun. heavenly father. Gold star for you. Oh, man. Yeah. Wow. But there's so much more to it. 
there's so much so more to it that I didn't know. Much, I felt uh, it made me feel really odd when I would think about having to explain the religion to somebody else. Yeah. I would not do a very good job. No, I really, I really 100% don't think anyone can until they go on their mission. Yeah. I had zero idea how to break it down to the point sure. where you could tell someone who had no idea what you were talking about. It was actually really hard. And what does that say mm-hmm. about a religion that's so complicated you can't even <laughs> explain it? Or they just keep without it, practicing keep for it weeks. from you until you've paid tithing for years and years. And then you go to the temple and then you have to do all this st- stuff and then keep it secret. Right. And not tell anyone. And then they got you. Yeah. Then you're working for them. Yeah. And then you're volunteering. Yeah. To go do that shit over and over and over again. Right. Either And then you're buying garments. And then you're paying fast offerings. Or just and then you then you have a calling. And depending on your calling, you could have it's like a second job. It really honestly is. So much time goes into that. Your bishops are there on like all day Sunday, all day Tuesday, Wednesday nights too. Ugh. It's just it's never ending. Our dad was the scout leader. For our, pretty much from, my whole life. By the time I entered scouts, he became the scout master right after I aged into Boy Scouts. Yeah. And he was until just a couple just years, a few ago. years ago. Yeah. And he loved it. He did. Yeah. Yeah, that was good for him. It was. The boys loved him. Yeah. It's it funny was good how for us, too. For you and dad. Yeah. Yeah. To have that experience mm-hmm. bonding. It's funny how intertwined the Boy Scouts is or was, it was with the LDS more. Church. To me, they were like synonymous. Yeah. Like I forgot that other people were. Well, they were the were biggest participators the of that program. Yeah. Uh, and without them, afloat. who knows what their future is? I don't know. I was always mad that like young women didn't have anything even comparable to that. Yeah, I don't know. I was like, what? This isn't fair. Every once in a while, there's like a a combined youth trip right. activity, yeah. like river rafting exactly. or something. As we're talking, I'm wondering who our audience is going to be for this. Yeah. Because we are speaking very inside baseball very. without even realizing it. Yeah. Like there's a lot what that's going to go over. What wards and congreg- bishops and Sunday schools. If there's Exmos listening to this, you're fine. Oh, yeah. I, I imagine that is the primary audience. But right. So if you are unaware, mm-hmm. I would advise to go to the Fundamentals podcast and listen to those episodes. Yeah. It's a good way to catch up. And then we are going to get into more broad topics yeah. relating to the church and um, more deep doctrinal stuff mm-hmm. and odd things about it. Uh, we're just kind of taking it one episode at a time. And yeah. I think that you and I are going to learn more about each other's understanding of this mm-hmm. these things. Right. I think we're both going to learn things that we didn't know. Yeah. I expect so much. I expect to get a good amount of Mormon perspective from you on, on certain stuff right? that I never got to. Yeah. I already have, you know, as we've talked about this stuff. Yeah. But, uh, there's a lot. Yeah. I'm excited. This is going to be fun. Yeah. It is fun. We're, yeah, we're going to do a a few episodes today. I think, I think this is a good place to, to wrap up. Number one, this is who we are. This is why we're here. And uh, this is what we're going to do. Yep. And we hope you will be here with us. Yeah. So, yeah, that's it for this pilot episode of Siblings and Zion. Siblings and Zion. It's a, I think it's a catchy title. I'd like to think so. Yeah. Better be. It, <laughs> hope so. Because it's too late now. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. It's out there. And, uh, yeah. Uh, and when we launch this show, there will be several episodes available. So, yeah. You can just keep on going. Join us in the next one. Thank you for listening. Uh, Amen. Amen. (laughs) (laughs) I finished my rosé. Oh, we're going to get some more. Okay.